Hello, my name is Katie Hopkins and I'm here with your European update for American Truth Project. The idea is that you can learn everything you need to know about Europe in about five minutes or less. Uh, right now we are on the edge of finally getting out of Europe. This is the point where they're trying to organise a deal. So we formally left the EU on the 31st of January this year, 2020, but we were given a further year to try and come up with a deal. And that deadline is the 31st of December, at which point, if there's going to be a deal, it needs to be ratified. So we are at the point of either leaving with a deal or leaving with no deal. And even though the politicians have had 11 months to try and sort this out, obviously uh, they're taking it to the very edge, to the very precipice. I think there's a little bit of sort of dramatization going on here. Um, and it's still not been decided if there'll be a deal or not. Now for Brexit hardliners like myself, people who want it out, want us separate from the EU, want our sovereignty back, want to be in control of ourselves, um, we want no deal. The idea of leaving with a clean break, you probably heard that being spoken about. We want to leave with a clean break so that Europe can no longer tell us what to do. More likely has always been that they will come up with some kind of deal. And of course, that will mean compromises. There are three key areas that are proving to be sticking points at the moment. And those are fisheries, because the EU still wants to be able to fish in British waters. Um, a level playing field. The EU still wants the UK to formally comply with all kind of regs, which would be things like workers' rights. Um, and that's something by leaving, we want to leave all of those things. And then finally, um, there's a sense that there is no agreement yet on dispute resolution. So there's no known way of how disputes would be resolved and that hasn't been agreed either. So those are the sticking points. We are, what, two weeks out um, and it looks like we still don't have this deal sorted. I think they will come up with a deal in the end. If there's no deal, we would leave and trade according to WTO, World Trade Organization, rules. And for us hardcore Brexiteer, that would be what we've wanted all along. We want to leave. We don't want to pay them some huge settlement and we don't want to still be somewhat half in, half out. The second big story out of Europe and specifically the UK is vaccines. Our leadership told us there would not be an immunity passport. But of course, what do we find coming out yesterday? A vaccine card, which sounds very much to me and probably to you like a immunity passport. It's a card you get once you've received your vaccination. It says on it in block capitals, keep it with you at all times. And there's a thought that it would then be used to give you access to whatever they choose to take away from us. We've just had pictures uh, shown on live TV of the first vaccine being given to a 90 year old lady. I mean, who knows what they gave her, but a vaccine being given to the 90 year old lady. She says, of course, according to script, it's the best day of her life. We had our health secretary, Matthew Handcock, uh, on TV crying crocodile tears because he said it was such an emotional moment for him. And of course, the press gangs are really out now to tell people they need to have this vaccine using celebrities, using kind of inducements, persuading people, that sort of... I mean, it's interesting and fascinating watching the communications team at work on this. Uh, it's slightly terrifying to see how some people are lapping it up how others are acting as enforcers inside the family units to make their elderly people have it. And of course, a stream of people on email to me working inside our socialised healthcare system telling me they feel pressurised to have it. They aren't comfortable being part of the immunisation programme and they are not willing to give this vaccine to patients nor to take it themselves because they're not comfortable with it. And of course, they have nowhere to express that view. that There is simply no place for them to talk about that. And the final thing that I wanted to talk to you about is football. So to use soccer, what happened last weekend, and we'll see what happens this week, is that a soccer match between a particular uh, team called Millwall. Millwall are always rather naughty. They're always getting into trouble. I love them dearly as a result. They booed loudly 
when players took a knee on the pitch. Now, they did not boo, in my opinion, because of anything to do with race or colour, nothing to do with it. The same as happens in the States. Football supporters who've paid for their tickets, who were allowed in the stadium for the first time, do not want politics and division brought into sport, and so they booed. And of course, outcry, outrage everywhere. The club is outraged, the press are outraged, apologies all over the place. But the interesting thing will be, what are football clubs going to do about this as they go into the next weekend? Because I know the British people and they will boo again. I know football supporters. And somehow the media have to have it that the booing can't be heard or the teams maybe don't take a knee. There's a discussion that maybe they're going to link arms instead. There's going to be an interesting thing happens because the voice of the people, as we know, will always be heard and the media know they've got an issue because if they leave the sound recording on in the any of the stadiums, you're going to hear booing if people take a knee because people are sick of having politics in their football. We don't need sort of more division. We need unifiers. Anyway, my name's Katie Hopkins. This has been your European update for ATP. To get more of these sent directly to you, absolutely free, um, there's a free sign up. And all you have to do is text the letters uh, which are my initials, K-T-H, as in capital K, capital T-H, text K-T-H to 88202. So if you get your phone, put in the number 88202 and you just text the letters K-T-H and our European updates will be sent to you plus our other content at ATP, absolutely free of charge. And I look forward to seeing you on the Barry and Katie show on Friday and into the weekend.